Well, good afternoon, and I, Nolan, thank you for hosting this. I really appreciate you chairing everything, and uh, Kay, uh, thank you wherever Kay went. Thank you for everything, and and Pat. Um, and I saw Patrick. Uh, he had to leave a minute ago because he did have a birthday party, and I tell him going to a birthday party with his daughter was very more important than probably anything else. So, but I appreciate everyone coming together, coming out on a Saturday, taking time away from your families and other things to really spend some time and get involved in government. Get involved, because this is your government. I mean, it's your constitution, it's your state. That's the problem we have in Washington. You know, a lot of folks up there, they forget about that it is we the people, and the people are actually in charge of this government, and in charge of this country. And it's people like you getting involved. It was good to see all the Valdosta State students here getting active and caring. They were just talking about how they've got a new conservative group forming over at Valdosta State. And I like to see when young people are getting involved in government. That's what the whole Tea Party movement's about. It's people saying we're tired of politicians, think they're in charge of everything, and they forget who the boss is. See, public service is just that. It is service. And that's what a lot of people forget. You know, in my 15 years serving the public as a state executive constitutional officer, that's one thing I've never forgotten. You know, I never could figure out why all these government offices close around 4.30 or 5 o'clock when you're still a bit at work making money to take care of your family and it allows you to pay some taxes to support government. Never seemed to make sense to me. So my office is open till 7 o'clock at night. We're the only state agency outside of emergency personnel that's open till 7. And it's not just the hours you're open, it's the basic concept that says that you're more important, your time's more important. Government should work to its inconvenience for the convenience of those that we serve. And that's exactly what we're doing. And when you call my office, you know, something else happens. We're kind of old-fashioned. You get like live human beings actually answer the phone. Remember when live people knew how to do that? It's kind of neat. And you know what's great about a live person answering the phone? We never ask you to push one for English. <laughs> And also these years, I've run a good conservative government. You now every year we have returned money back to the taxpayers, given money back to the treasurer. And we've also been lean and we've been mean. And that's given me the experience that we can take this budget crisis and we can make government smaller. We have a terrible budget problem, but let's use it as an opportunity. Let's look at what government's doing that it shouldn't be doing. Let's look at how government can be more efficient. Even before this budget crisis, my office was doing more work for more people, open later hours, with 20% fewer government employees than we had 14 years ago. How many government offices you ever hear about that that got fewer employees? Not many. That is conservative leadership, but it takes someone with the education and the experience to know how to do it give you an idea about my office. I'm the insurance commissioner. I'm the fire commissioner. It's the fire marshal. I'm the industrial loan commissioner, small consumer finance loans. I'm the comptroller general of the state of Georgia. Those could be four different government agencies in their own right. But we consolidate them. You consolidate government services. You have one commissioner, one executive office, one procurement office, one human resource office. It makes government more efficient. That's one thing I want to do is I want to reduce the size of government. We got way too many government agencies. We got too many government employees. You know, one thing that also bothers me is, you ever hear about folks get elected and then they say, well, sir, that's not what I promised. And ma'am, you misunderstood me. I, I don't think I told you I was going to do that. Or you heard it the wrong way. You ever hear these folks that get elected and have trouble keeping their promises? You ever hear about that? Well, I did something. My, my staff told me not to do this. But I don't always listen to them. I came out with a contract for Georgia. In the light of who I think was one of the finest public servants we ever had in this country was Newt Gingrich. I tell you, if we had Newt Gingrich back as speaker and Ronald Reagan back as president, we wouldn't have any of these problems in America. This is 12 things of what an Oxendown administration will do. 12 things. This is exactly what we will stand for. 
And my staff said, don't do it. Don't do it. And I said, why? They said, well, people may not agree with all 12. You know what I said? That's okay. It doesn't matter. You have a right to know what you're getting. I don't care if you don't agree with all 12, but transparency is important, and you need to know what you're getting in a governor. Now, hopefully you'll agree with all 12. If not, hopefully you'll agree with more than you disagree with. If you disagree with the majority of them, congratulations, you're what we call a Democrat. <laughs> when I go around the state, people say, what are the biggest issues? And it's really one issue, it's jobs. That's what it all comes down to, but it's got different faces to it. It's got a lot of different faces. It's people don't want to come to a state, bring jobs to a state that has a failed transportation system, and we do. People are reluctant about coming to a state and bringing jobs to a state that doesn't have a reliable water supply. People aren't happy about coming to a state and bringing jobs to a state when Alabama has higher SAT scores, but Georgia has a higher dropout rate. That's not exactly a good Chamber of Commerce moment. It's all about jobs. And that's what the governor needs to be doing is bringing jobs to Georgia. Talk about some of the issues that you have here. Real simple, pro-life. I, I and a couple of other of my candidates were endorsed by uh, Georgia Right to Life. It's endorsed by Georgia Right to Life for one simple reason. I believe in life. Now, it's not a matter of abortion or people having a right or a choice or any of that stuff. You see, I, I just can't understand the difference in life. To me, life is life. You're conceived, you have life. It continues until you naturally die. That is life. I don't care if it's an unborn child or if it's grandma in the nursing home. It's all life. It's a gift from God. No further discussion. <laughs> states' rights. You know, a lot of people talk about states' rights and talk about the Tenth Amendment. Let me tell you how strongly I feel about the Tenth Amendment. It's real simple. I told people yesterday, I said, to me, the Tenth Amendment reminds me of the old history story of the guy that Caesar, you know, he'd be riding his chariot through ancient Rome. You've seen that in all the movies and stuff. And there's always that servant, you know, holding the reef over his head. And the story goes that the servant is whispering into Caesar's ear, you are just a man. You're just a man. You're not God. You're just a man. You know, the ancient Romans had a problem with, uh, you know, emperor worship while well, I thought they were gods. People in Washington, D.C. have that same problem, by the way. The Tenth Amendment is the American people whispering into the federal government's ear, you're just men and women. You're human. You're not God. You don't have the power of God. It's still we the people that run this country, and it's our Constitution. And I've said something that's a little controversial. To the extent that any member of Congress will actually extend federal, federal power beyond that of the Constitution as governor, it is my obligation to defend the people of Georgia and to defend the Constitution. And I will do everything I can to get that member of Congress, whether it's the House or the U.S. Senate, defeated and thrown out of office, even if it's a fellow Republican. Because let me tell you, Republicans have a problem about enlarging federal government and not understanding the Constitution, too. It tends to be Democrats more often, but we got some Republicans that need education. And my obligation to the people of Georgia and to this Constitution is a lot more important than my obligation to someone who just claims to be a Republican. <laughs>